Much of the country is set to battle very intense heat over the course of this week. There will also be rounds of storms, some of them severe, worth watching each and every day. This video has the latest details that you need to know on the hot and stormy pattern ahead. Thank you for joining me at One Nation Weather, where I'm taking another weather video in depth to give you the latest information. I want to start today's update with a look at the mid-level pattern, 15 to 20,000 feet into the atmosphere, and how what goes on in the sky is going to dictate what happens at the surface as we go through this week. Starting with the playthrough from this European model as we go into the Monday, July 21st time frame, you can see that there is pretty much going to be a 50-50 split in the colors that you see across the country. In general, a lot of the central and eastern U.S. is filled in by this yellowish-orange shade. That indicates a abnormal ridge in the jet stream for this time of the year where the jet stream is pushed northbound. Whenever the jet stream is pushed northbound in an abnormal way, you tend to see some warmer than average temperatures developing around that area and in areas behind it. On the flip side, there is going to be an abnormal trough or a dip in the jet stream coming down through the west. You can even see see the gradient of lines closer together in parts of the west as a result of that jet stream dipping on down. The abnormal trough is going to help in pooling in some cooler air, especially in the parts of the Pacific Northwest, while making for some active weather on its leading edge in the zones that remain warmer. That's going to be the general trend as we continue to go through Tuesday. Tuesday and even towards Wednesday and a Thursday. The ridge in some parts of the central and eastern U.S. will only build more, and in general, some zones out west will be on the troughier side, where we see a little bit more in the way of dips in the jet stream. We will see active weather continuing out of the west and into at least northern and central zones as a result of that active jet stream pattern. The key word in what I just said was ridge, and as a result of that ridge, there is going to be a lot of warmer than average temperature conditions building in the country this week. Let's track that day by day starting with a look at the Monday and Tuesday time frame aka the early week graphic you can see that in general some parts of the central U.S. around where that ridge will start are already going to be warmer than average in terms of temperatures for the Monday and Tuesday time frame parts of Texas Oklahoma and Kansas will be the furthest above average with highs around 10 degrees above normal for July since the ridge will not have pushed all the way as far north as Canada as we start this week there is still going to be some around to below average temperatures so some cooler air along parts of the northern U.S. border. Back out west, there will also be some cooler air, of course, as that is where the jet stream will be dipping down pretty consistently this week. Here we go, though. By the midweek time frame, that ridge is going to be expanding north and east. A lot of the central parts of the country and a good bit of the east will be warmer than average in terms of temperatures as a result of that ridge as we go towards around Wednesday and even into Thursday. The hardest hit zones by above average temperatures each afternoon midweek. That's going to include parts of Nebraska, Kansas, Iowa, and Missouri. Those zones will still be around to above average in terms of the general trend as a result of that ridge even towards the late week. Especially the Mississippi Valley all the way to the east coast though will be much warmer than average in terms of temperatures as we go towards around Friday. Out west things will still be cooler than average where we see that trough and continuing even towards Friday and into the weekend. This really shows how the mid to upper level pattern of the atmosphere can dictate the broader scale surface patterns for an extended period of time. I just showed you that animation of the mid and upper level pattern with weather bell maps. Make sure you're checking out the weather bell free trial linked down below so that you can access these maps for yourself and then pay for a subscription if you'd like. And also make sure you're hitting that subscribe button if you are new to the channel and have not yet subscribed. Doing those two things really helps support this kind of content from my channel in the algorithm. With that being said though, I want to now jump back into the temperature discussion by looking at the forecasted heat index temperatures day by day this week. The heat index is a measure of not only the air temperature outside, but how it is also going to feel on your skin as a result of increased moisture levels that often come in the summertime. Whenever the humidity is higher and the dew point values are higher at the surface, it is going to be harder for sweat to evaporate off your skin, and that can make 90 and 95 and 100 degrees feel well over 100 degrees. Let's start this discussion with a look, of course, at the Monday afternoon and evening time frame, where it is going to be sweltering over especially the southern zones that I had highlighted in the yellow and orange areas on my anomaly graphic a couple minutes ago. You can see in parts of Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, and points south and east from there, it is looking quite nasty, and the peak heating of the day is going to bring 100 to 110 degree heat index values with it. If you do have to work outside in any of these areas Monday and in any of the zones that I highlight and circle each day from here, make sure that you're drinking plenty of water or just limiting your time outdoors to begin with. 
heat exhaustion and heat stroke are real things, and that is why the National Weather Service is already putting up heat advisories and extreme heat warnings in a lot of these areas. Pushing things forward on this graphic from Monday evening into the Tuesday morning time frame, you can see that there will be a brief relief period from the heat if you go outside maybe from 4 to 7 a.m. on a day like Tuesday further south. Even then, it'll still be feeling like 80 in a lot of those states I was just mentioning for Monday afternoon's peak heat. Tuesday will be hot in a lot of the same zones as well as in zones further north as, of course, we will see those anomalies moving north with the jet stream by mid to late week. Already, you can see Tuesday will be bringing in temperatures of 100 plus or at least a heat index of 100 plus into parts of the north central U.S. This will not be the last day where we see it up in places like Nebraska and Iowa, though. Here we go towards the Wednesday afternoon and evening time frame. It is going to be a very hot day, especially along the Mississippi Valley corridor. That's why I have a lot of the deeper orange shades for my midweek temperature anomaly graphic in those zones. Look at these states I'm hashing out. Eastern Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, parts of Kentucky and Tennessee, We've got Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa. That's a lot of states where those pinkish shades are showing up. That means it is going to be feeling like 100 to 115 in so many areas on Wednesday afternoon and evening. That's definitely going to be the worst heat that we see midweek, although even eastward from there towards parts of the mid-Atlantic and the southeast, it will be feeling like 90 plus. That's still dangerous enough with time if you're not drinking enough water and you're outside. As we go out of Wednesday towards Thursday and Friday, that's when we're going to start to see the heat also expanding further east into valleys around and even eastward of the Appalachians. Now, it's still going to be worse towards the Mississippi Valley on a day like Thursday. A lot of the same zones I just mentioned, even back towards Texas and Oklahoma once again, we're going to be looking at heat index values of 100 to 110 plus. It will be around 100 for a heat index in many zones further east already on Thursday. And then here we go towards Friday. That's going to be the real kicker day for parts of the Mid-Atlantic and some parts of southern New England states. Boston, it'll feel like 100 on a Friday afternoon. Back over to parts of New York and New Jersey, it'll be feeling like 100 to 105. All the way down the east coast from there as well, it will be feeling quite similar. Back on over here into the south central U.S., it will be a week-long event where we see the heat lasting around, even if it's not as far above average technically in terms of the actual temperature on a day like Friday. And it's going to be feeling like 100 to 110 still. That is very intense and dangerous. Even towards Saturday, the heat index values are going to be horrible over such a vast expanse. This is really the dog days of summer in terms of the temperatures. Now that we've talked about temperatures in depth, I want to take a look at the future radar overview and track the storm chance areas we'll have to watch across the country in the coming days. Starting with Monday afternoon and evening, you can see that we are going to see multiple areas to watch in terms of showers and thunderstorms. One of those boundaries is going to be an old front that's going to be dipping down into some parts of the southeastern U.S. as well as the Gulf Coast. It generally just means scattered storms for places like Kentucky, Tennessee, the Carolinas, and Virginia. Points southbound from there for Monday and probably again on Tuesday. But keep an eye out and watch this same area as we go further through this guidance. A low pressure is going to try to form deeper through this week and then eventually move west along the Gulf Coast. That could definitely be tropical in nature. Before I get too deep into talking about that, though, here's a look at what's going to be going on further west on Monday afternoon and evening. Storms in some parts of Idaho and Montana as we see jet stream energy being active there. We can see some severe weather out of that as well as these storms we get in the north central and high plains regions. To me, Tuesday looks like it's going to be almost a mirror image day to what Monday afternoon and evening looked like. Here we go. You can see some more storms in some parts of the north central states and the upper Midwest. Back as far west as Montana and Idaho and as far south as New Mexico, there will be some storms building there. Down in the southeast U.S., we will also still be watching that lingering front getting closer towards the coast, where I think flooding and isolated severe weather chances will continue to ramp up. That will especially include places like coastal South Carolina, coastal Georgia, and a lot of the Florida Peninsula and even the Panhandle. Here we go towards Wednesday. Track that low that's actually probably going to be getting itself together by the time we get towards July 23rd. There's an area of spin. I want to show it to you. Watch down there towards the Georgia and Carolina and Florida region. You can see it kind of curling around that precipitation. Probably moving around a center of low pressure that's going to be trying to work its way on out over the far northern Gulf by around 8 p.m. Wednesday. That's definitely going to continue to be pulling some moisture on through and likely increasing the flood risk there. Further north, we're going to be continuing to watch the active weather really riding up against the ridge but not into it. That means parts of the north central U.S. will remain active while the south central U.S., the mid-Mississippi Valley, the northeast remains fairly bone dry for the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday time frame. 
if you look closely as I play this out of Wednesday into Thursday, you're actually going to notice the spin around that general upper ridge that's going to be stationed right about here by the time we go towards the end of the week. Watch that general flow, which is going to be something like this as we see the clockwise fashion of winds through multiple layers of the atmosphere. There you go. You could see it kind of shifting that front further north, and then we're also seeing that gulf low shifting west to the south of our ridge, and that's going to mean parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama get a higher chance of flooding, heavy rainfall, as well as gusty winds from whatever this may be by Thursday. Further north, we're still going to be watching all that frontal action, and that's going to be trying to slide even into some parts of the interior northeast Thursday afternoon and evening. Storm chances don't look to be bringing any sort of wild severe weather on any given day, but we could definitely see some damaging winds, hail, and isolated tornadoes out of each round that we get. By Friday, our Gulf low is probably going to be starting to curl on up into an increasingly active pattern that's going to get going out of the central and into the eastern U.S. The first ridge that we're going to be watching over the next five to seven days is really going to be degrading in the east. So we'll kind of see that front from further north falling apart and crashing south. We'll see that low off the Gulf allowed to move northbound. And between those two, we'll get increasing chances of showers and thunderstorms. When I end the video in just a couple of minutes, I'm going to close it out with an in-depth look at the severe weather potential from the storms in various zones that we'll see Monday. Then I'll talk in more detail about that tropical low as we go through the last couple of minutes. First, though, let's take a look at the areas of the heaviest rainfall and where we could see flooding as a result of storms this week. From Monday morning to Wednesday morning, so especially the rounds of storms we get Monday and Monday night and Tuesday and Tuesday night, we are going to see heavier rainfall that could result in isolated scattered flooding over some parts of the southeast, as well as at these northern states that I'm circling. Many spots in the blues and yellows, use that key at the bottom, you can see we'll be getting at least an inch or so of rain. We'll continue to see the southeast and Gulf Coast light up with heavy rain, and then zones much further north from there as well doing the same thing as we get towards Thursday and Friday. That's where flooding will be prevalent. So down in Mississippi, it'll be flooding, and it will be flooding up in Minnesota likely at the same time, heading out of Wednesday and towards even Thursday. Let's do the housekeeping now and talk about the last couple of things I want to discuss in the video. One of those things is the severe weather potential specifically out of the storms we're going to see tomorrow on our Monday, July 21st. We could see some flooding in the southeast U.S. We could also see an isolated risk for severe storms. I'm highlighting that area on my custom ONW severe weather scale. For the last couple of months, I've been using the Storm Prediction Center severe weather risk graphics. I really, at heart, love making my own graphic, kind of based on the Storm Prediction Center, but also based on my own understanding and my analysis of the models. That's why we're back to using the Severe Scale, which is a level 0 to level 7 forecast product. We are as high as a level 2 of 7, so an isolated risk for severe weather will exist along that front as it begins to slow down over the southeastern U.S. to start the week. Isolated damaging winds and isolated large hail will be threats in places like the Carolinas on a day like Monday. That will also include Georgia, Alabama, and Tennessee, for example. Back out to the northwest, where we see some of those storms moving out of the north central and high plains, and even in some parts of the upper Midwest, there is a level 2 to level 3 on my scale for Monday and Monday night. Widely scattered damaging wind gusts and widely scattered large hail look likely up there. As promised, the last thing that I want to talk about in a little bit more detail is the tropical depression risk percentage that we're going to see as we try to get that tropical low forming somewhere near the southeast or Gulf Coast region of the U.S. this week. Looking at this blended guidance and at the percent chance it shows for tropical depression development from Tuesday morning to Wednesday morning, you can see there is a very splotchy spot where there is a 10 to 20 percent chance existing. That's around the Georgia or Carolina coast. I personally do not think we're going to get much of a closed low pressure system, especially at the surface on the east side of Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. So in the Atlantic side of things, I don't think we're going to get a close low. Either way, we're going to get enough low pressure for there to be some heavier rain in all these zones and a flood risk, of course, through midweek. By mid to late week, that's when we get that likely low or whatever is coming across Florida and Georgia to really start at least closing off. That means we're getting a closed center of circulation trying to organize here in the north central Gulf. There's about a 10 to 20 percent chance that would be depression over a broader area of the northern Gulf on a day like Wednesday. Then by the time we get towards Thursday into early Friday, you can see guidance is indicating more like a 20 to a 30 percent chance that near a place like southern Louisiana will see a land falling low that would be of tropical depression status. This would mean sustained winds of maybe 30 to 40 miles per hour at the landfall site. Nothing too intense. I think flooding is just going to be the main threat out of the system regardless. I'm just pointing out, you know, we could have something interesting moving west, which is a weird direction 
uh, especially when you see something coming off the coast of the Carolinas and then curling around and up and under a ridge like this. Interesting setup for sure for this time of the year. With that being said, here is the latest recap right here at One Nation Weather of what I've been talking about. Of course, intense heat, that's the main headline for this week. It's going to be building eastward. Temperatures will feel 100 plus for millions each day by Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Even broader zones will be feeling like intense triple digit heat. You need to be ready to be drinking plenty of water if you have to be outside at all this week in the zones I've been mentioning. Two zones will be notably stormy as well. One of those is going to be in some parts of the plains and the northern zones. We're also going to have, of course, the southeast U.S. where tropical trouble could become possible, particularly in the Gulf. With that being said, that's all I have for today's video. Thanks for joining me and for sticking around all the way to this recap. Make sure you're subscribing down below so that you don't miss content in the future. I want to keep it more real and a little bit more laid back in style on these videos in the future. So make sure you're sticking with me and I'll catch you in the next one. God bless you all. One Nation Web.